Hello, and welcome back to another MATLAB video. My name is Patambar, and today's topic is semantic segmentation. We're going to cover two things. Number one, what is semantic segmentation? Number two, how do you do it? Now, before we get started, I want to mention that this video is going to cover higher level concepts. I'm not going to be going through a specific code example, but if that's what you're looking for, go ahead and click the link in the description below. That's probably where you want to be. But if you're new to this, you want to learn about the workflow or just rehash some of the concepts, this video is for you. So let's start with the basics. What is semantic segmentation? Semantic segmentation is the process of taking an image and labeling each pixel in that image with a certain class. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a picture of me at the beach. Now don't be distracted by how fantastic I look, but after going through the semantic segmentation workflow, that picture would look like this. Notice how there's two classes. There's person and there's background. The pixels inside of my silhouette are assigned to person and the pixels outside my silhouette are assigned to background. Now, the key to semantic segmentation is that the computer actually did the segmenting of that image automatically. In order to do that, we have to take a bunch of images of people standing in backgrounds, and we have to label where the people are and label where the background is, and then we use that information to create a convolutional neural network. And we train that network, and when we put in a new image of a person standing in some background, it'll be able to segment that image into the two parts. It's pretty cool. But now you're probably wondering, what's the practical application of this? Let me give you an example. Let's say that I owned a car company called Pitambar's Cars, and this car company sold cars with automated driving systems. Let's talk about that automated driving system. One way I could create it is with semantic segmentation. I could take a bunch of images of the road and label where the lanes are, where other cars are, where pedestrians are, where trees are, where the sky is, where a lamppost is, anything. I could just label all of these things. And I could do that for thousands of images. And then I could use all of these images to create a convolutional neural network that when given a new image of the road, it can pick out where the lanes are, where are people, where are trucks, where are buses, et cetera, et cetera. And from there, I can implement safety features like automatic braking or that thing that stops you from turning when there's a car right next to you or a parallel parking system. Obviously that requires like more algorithms, but semantic segmentation is the crux for determining where those things are. Okay, I hope at this point that you're convinced on why we're focusing on the subject. Now what I wanna do is walk you through the steps at a very high level. So let's jump into MATLAB and talk about our first step which is labeling the images. I'm gonna open up MATLAB and I'll start by opening the image labeler app. There's a section here called apps and we're gonna go down and click image labeler. We'll see this new screen pop up. The first thing we'll do is import our images. So I'll go to load and I'll add in these images. This first picture is me as a freshman in college and the second one is me as a senior. Clearly my hair grew faster than my sense of style. Now, in order to do semantic segmentation, we first need to define our labels. And there's a section here that says, define new ROI label. ROI stands for region of interest, by the way. I'm gonna click that and we're gonna label eyes, nose, ears, and mouth. I'll create a label that says eyes. And I have two options, rectangle and pixel label. I want pixel label because that will allow me to be really specific with my selection and that's what I need to pick to do semantic segmentation. I'll add a description and click OK. I'll create another ROI label called ears and another one called nose and finally mouth. And once I've created all of my ROI labels, I'm going to start labeling. So let's zoom into my eye and start drawing a mask around it. We'll finish our selection by clicking where we started. We can see that the eye now gets highlighted. Let's pan over and do the same thing for my second eye. Now, I'll intentionally mess this one up so I can show you some of the other tools. Oops, it looks like I've overshot this. Let me use the eraser to erase the part I don't want. Oh no, but now I've erased too much. What will I do? I know, 
I'll use the brush and I'll fill in the part I actually want. Once I finish with the eyes, I'll click the nose label and label the nose, then I'll do the mouth and the ears, and the same thing for the second image. If I did this correctly, I've turned both pictures of myself into pictures of clowns. Just kidding, these are the labels. While I'm doing this process for only two images, you should really be doing this for way more images. Depending on your images, you might be able to implement some kind of algorithm. So right here, there's a button that says select algorithm. Click it and you can click on create new algorithm. So once you finish labeling all of your images, you need to export your labels. So I'll go here and I'll click to workspace. And when I do this and go back to MATLAB, I now have a ground truth object called gtruth. This object has all of the information that I gave my computer when I labeled the images. All right, let's cut back to the video and I'll teach you how to do the remainder of the steps at a high level. All right, step one was to label our images and we just did that. Step two is to create two data stores, an image label data store and a pixel label data store. Now, this is very simple to do, but I'm not gonna go into code, so again, I'm gonna direct you to the example, which you should totally check out after watching this video. Step three is to partition your data stores into training sets and test sets. The reason we do this is because whenever we work with convolutional neural networks, we need a set of data to train our network on and a set of different data to test our network on and see if it works. And that brings us to step four, which is to import a pre-trained model into MATLAB and modify it to be a segnet. Again, I'm gonna refer you to the code example for more details, we use a model called VGG16, and we very easily convert that into a segnet. Finally, step five, train and evaluate your network. And that's it. So with those five steps, you've now learned the crux of semantic segmentation. I'll go over them again, and I'll list them right here as well. Step one, label your data or search the internet for labeled data. Step two, create two data stores, image label data store and a pixel label data store. Step three, partition your data stores into training sets and test sets. Step four, import a pre-trained model and modify it to be a segnet. And step five, train and evaluate your network. And there you have it folks, semantic segmentation. Now, thank you guys for tuning in, really appreciate it. If you have any feedback, leave it below. Otherwise, check out the code example and I'll see you guys in another video.